Welcome. Today we're going to talk about how to promote a short story anthology from a traditional publisher as a relatively unknown editor. Now, before you watch this video, I highly recommend that you watch the first three videos in this series, which talk about the pitch, the process, and the production of that anthology. Today, we're going to talk about how to promote it once you've completed it and it's out in the market. The first step that you want to do in this process is send ARCs and eARCs to key influencers, particularly in your genre. And by ARCs, I mean advanced reading copy for those who are unknown editors like I was when I did my first anthology. But what that allows you to do is to generate some buzz before your launch day. And you want to make sure that you approach people with the broadest possible platform. So if you're in the science fiction genre, as an example, there are many authors who provide platforms in order for you to broadcast and boost the signal of your launch. One particular place that I always go to is John Scalzi's whatever website. He has an opportunity for authors who are launching to talk about their novels or anthologies in something that's called the big idea. And you talk about the big idea behind your book and he will provide you with space on his website for the day of launch or whenever you can get a date on that particular website to promote your book. Now there's a whole set of instructions that I'm not going to cover here that you need to be mindful of. I highly recommend you check it out. The next step that you should do is to reach out to key media influencers and book reviewers at major media outlets. And I'm talking about Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Washington Post, All Things Considered at NPR, which as an example has an audience of roughly 15 million radio listeners. The Joe Rogan Podcast. Now, the chances that you'll be on as an unknown editor are slim to none, but it's going to be a 0% chance if you don't reach out at all. So you might as well try. In my case, when I was first pitching my first anthology, Weird World War III, I made a list of these key influencers and sent out 132 emails to request a review from many of these sites. I believe zero of them took me up in the offer, but you never know. It can happen. The other thing you want to make sure that your publisher's doing is that they've sent a copy to Publishers Weekly so that you can get a review there. Again, it only helps you in boosting the signal to have a review in that particular magazine. The first time that I did this, I didn't get a review. In my second anthology, I did. It was a good one and it worked out pretty well. So. Again, step two is to reach out to major media influencers and major book review sites. You never know. You might get something when you do it, and if you don't do it, you're definitely not going to get something. The third step is to work your network. You might have friends who work in public relations at your company who know people who can help make contacts and connect you with folks who are interested in your anthology and might be willing to promote it. Doesn't always work, but it doesn't hurt to try. So work your network when you're in the promotion phase. Step four comes directly from the movie Glen Gary, Glen Ross. If you haven't seen that movie, it's about sales and selling. And there's a scene with Alec Baldwin where he talks about ABC. And at the end of the day, when you are promoting your book, always be closing, always be selling. When you're talking to your friends, your family, and you're just having random conversations, always try to make a direct sale. I know it's awkward, I know it's weird, but as you're going into the promotion phase and you're talking to family members or talking to friends, always try to find a way in a very natural manner to make a sale. You know, if they ask you how your weekend was, oh, I was working on this anthology. Oh, really, what's it about? You tell them about the anthology, and they're like, oh, that sounds really interesting. And then that's when you say, well, I, I really hope that you check it out. Here's where you can find it. And I'd appreciate if you made a copy, and I even sign it for you if that helps. In fact, you could order it on Amazon, have them send it to my house, I'll sign it for you, and I'll send it back to you. Be happy to do that. 
Then there's also indirect selling. So writing blog posts and in those blog posts having a link directly to a place where they can buy it either on Barnes & Noble or Amazon. In fact you can also take advantage of affiliate sales with Amazon where you can set up an account with Amazon and you can make a percentage of that sale if they click on one of your links and are directed to your own book. So highly recommend that as well but make it as easy as possible for someone to make a sale. There should be no excuse. Always be closing. The fifth step of successful promotion, particularly if you're making an anthology, is to promote your writers. Anthologies typically don't sell as well as standalone novels. However, the one advantage you have as an anthologist that a standalone novel doesn't is that you have names in your anthology, if you put them together properly, that are bigger names than you. And by promoting those authors, you intrigue their fans and increase the likelihood that you'll get a crossover effect where their fans will purchase the anthology solely because their favorite author has a story in it. And one way to do that is if you have a blog to run a series where you show or feature one of your authors every day during the lead up to your launch. So for Weird World War III, I had 19 authors and I had a little profile on each of them that came out every single day, 19 days leading up to the launch. And it also had links to their own books so that by promoting your authors, if your authors do well, you'll do well. Step number six, and this is something that should be fairly obvious, but not everybody has this. Have a dedicated website for the book that you have coming out or for your own personal brand. That way, if someone is trying to decide on whether or not to buy your particular anthology, they can easily find you on the internet and then and can purchase that book and learn all about you and learn all about the authors that have stories in the anthology in one simple place. And, and also, it's helpful to be able to do blog posts to let people know what sort of media and press you've gotten for the book so far and to consolidate that all in one page to help really generate hype for your anthology. Step seven, which is also a very obvious step, is leverage social media as much as you possibly can. Make sure you get the word out through Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, MeWe, and any other of your favorite social networks. YouTube is also something that is very helpful to getting your word out. In fact, I started this YouTube channel initially to help promote Weird World War IV, which is my second anthology. And instead of having a blog post on each individual author, I started doing video interviews of those authors so that folks could get more information and have more of a personal connection with them as the anthology went out. So make sure you leverage social media because if people don't know about your book, they're not going to buy it. Step number eight, again, another obvious one, make sure you ask people for Amazon reviews. I definitely was pretty aggressive about it in my first anthology and I have a good number of reviews. I'd like to have more than 100, but 66, pretty good for my first anthology. My second anthology, I haven't been as aggressive. Uh, I will I will start getting a little bit more aggressive going forward because it matters how your book shows up on the Amazon algorithm if you have more reviews. The more reviews you have, the better it will do on Amazon. So make sure that you solicit your friends and, and family and folks who purchased your book to put up reviews on Amazon. Step number nine, schedule events that help you sell your book. Now, when my book first came out, it was at the height of COVID season in October 2020. And as a result, I could have very few physical events. And if I did have events, I had to be very cognizant of wearing masks and following the proper protocol. And while I didn't schedule that many events, I had enough events that in my first week, I was easily able to hand sell 40 plus copies of the book through a local independent bookstore between books where I'm originally from in Delaware and also was able to sell some books at a local pub that 
was run by one of my cousins. And again, every little bit counts and those events certainly helped. Now, in a world of post-COVID, having book signings around the world or around the United States, particularly if you're an anthologist, you're gonna have authors from all over the country and all over the world. You should seek to maximize that opportunity to have signings and, and things like that. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit slower nowadays because people are still a little bit shell-shocked from the COVID experience, but over time, there will be more opportunities for these sorts of things, and any excuse to sell your books is a good excuse. And then step number 10 is adapt and overcome. There's gonna be things that happen during your book launch that are unanticipated. As I mentioned earlier, coronavirus was in full swing when I released my first book. There were printing delays and all sorts of issues with getting the word for my book out there and for interacting and engaging with readers. So you have to find other ways to sell your books in those sorts of circumstances. So in my case, I just did whatever virtual events I possibly could. I hand sold by calling friends and family. I even called bookstores and pitched my book and also told them that my publisher would provide them with some swag that would make it more attractive for them to sell in their bookstore. And in doing so, they were able to pre-order books for, frankly, an unknown book. And I also offered to go in and sign the books, even during COVID time. And that helped them or helped motivate them to sell the book. So literally, I would just call each individual Barnes & Noble and tell them I had a book coming out that I was either a local author or one of the authors in the anthology was a local author. And if the author had agreed to do any signings, that they would come into the bookstore and sign the books individually without a large crowd, because again, it was COVID time. And those sort of strategies really helped out. So those are the 10 steps in successfully promoting your anthology, particularly as an unknown editor. I hope these steps were helpful. And again, if you haven't checked out the three prior videos on pitch, process, and production, I highly recommend you do. Thanks again and see you soon. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.